there is this beautiful particle system called particle life. Its fascinating behavior simply arises from random asymmetrical attraction. I will now first explain the simple rules of this particle system using mathematical notation, and then I will show you an example implementation in JavaScript. My goal is that you can then go ahead and write your own implementation of particle life, because I think this particle system deserves a lot more attention and people playing around with it. I also hope that this video will help using a common notation across different implementations of particle life. If you only want to see footage of particle life, check out the other video on my channel. And on ParticleLife.com, you can download an advanced simulator for Particle Life. Alright, each particle has three properties. A constant color or type, which is simply an integer, and a position and a velocity, both of which are real vectors. And as in physics, the velocity here is written as the time derivative of the position, indicated by the little dot on top of the position variable. A particle is only affected by particles that are closer than one distance unit. And for each of these particles, we compute the distance by subtracting the coordinates and taking the length of that vector. And we plug that into the force function that tells us how strong the force is that pulls this particle in the direction of the other particle. And there's also another thing that we need to compute the magnitude of the force, the attraction factor. We have a matrix A that tells us for each combination of colors how strongly two particles of these colors should be attracted to or repelled by each other. Since we know the colors of both particles, we can simply look into the corresponding row and column to fetch the attraction factor A. And we will also plug that into the force function. And how does this force function work? There are multiple ways to do this, but I found the following to be easy to implement while still producing good looking results. I have a linear repulsive force that is initially negative 1 and then reaches 0 at some constant radius beta. I always choose beta equal to 0 0.3, but that's just a random choice of mine. And then comes the attractive part, which consists of two linear parts that are scaled proportional to the attraction factor. And here's how this would look in JavaScript but the exact shape of the function is not really important. All you need is a universal repulsive part and another part that is proportional to the attraction factor. And then the results will look similar. The magnitude of the force can vary, but we always want the force to act in the direction of the other particle, which is why we multiply the magnitude of the force with a unit vector that points in this direction. We repeat this for all particles inside the maximum radius and add up the results. And if we assume that all particles have a mass of 1, this finally gives us the acceleration for this particle. And here the acceleration is written as the second time derivative of the position indicated by the two dots on top of the position variable. And we can hide the indices to make this formula look less crowded. Now usually when implementing this, you don't want the maximum radius of interaction to be one distance unit. For example, if your coordinates are expressed in terms of pixels, one pixel would be too small. But the force function is expecting distances in the range of 0 to 1. To account for this, we simply divide the distance by r max before we send it to the force function. And that way it's in the range of 0 to 1 again. Then we just have to scale the result by r max afterwards. So let's summarize. To compute the acceleration of a particle, we sum over all other particles. For each other particle, we compute the force based on the normalized distance and on the attraction factor. We apply the force in the direction of the other particle and then scale the result by r max. Particle life is obviously not physical, just as Conway's game of life is not physical. For example, if the attraction matrix is not symmetrical, Particle life is breaking Newton's third law of equal and opposite forces. And this also means that there is no energy conservation in the system. Particles can just build up energy forever, and that's why we need friction. When we want to transform our computed acceleration into changes in velocity and position, we need to choose a time step delta t for each frame that we're simulating, and multiply the acceleration with that time step and add it to the existing velocity. And then we do the same with the new velocity and the existing position. 
but in order to introduce friction, we multiply the existing velocity with a constant between 0 and 1 before we do all of this. A more elegant way to write this is in terms of the half-life. That's just a constant that tells us after how much time half of the velocity should be lost due to friction. And this way our simulation doesn't depend on the exact value of delta t, and this means that we can for example adjust delta t depending on the current frame rate of the software and give the simulation a smoother feeling. There is a problem with integrating the acceleration like this. Sometimes we see these stand spots getting the zoomies, and people who are new to this often find this very exciting, but this phenomenon is not something innate to particle life. It's just an artifact of our discrete computations. It happens in areas with high density of particles that are attracted to each other, and the forces are really strong and point towards the center. Now our time step is so big that all particles just jump across the center. If we choose a smaller delta t to actually see what's going on, we see how the whole situation calms down and stabilizes. Before we start coding, here's an overview of all the variables and parameters that we need to describe our system. To get started, we have to say how many particles, colors and dimensions we have in our system. These parameters basically tell us how much memory we need to allocate in order to simulate the system. The attraction matrix and the friction half-life describe the behavior of the particle system and are therefore the most important parameters. The time step and the maximum radius are not really parameters of the particle system itself, but we usually have them in our code when simulating this particle system. Now here I'm already writing some boilerplate code in JavaScript. You can of course do this in any language, I just chose JavaScript for this tutorial because it's a very popular language. So first I define some parameters that we just talked about and initialize a random attraction matrix with values between negative 1 and 1. Then I create some arrays that store the properties of all particles. I initialize all colors with random integers between 0 and m-1, all positions with random floats between 0 and 1, and the velocities with 0. Then I create a loop that updates and draws these particles. Drawing the particles is pretty straightforward, you just have to scale them up to screen coordinates. For the colors, I set the hue value to the integer value divided by the number of colors. Updating the positions is also pretty straightforward. We simply add the velocity times delta t, as we discussed earlier. To update the velocities, we need to look at every pair of particles. That's why I'm creating a nested for loop here. And I make sure to skip the particle itself when looking at the neighbors. And I check that the distance value is actually greater than zero and smaller than the maximum radius. Then I normalize the distance and plug it into the force function together with the attraction factor, which I fetch from the matrix, and then scale the direction's unit vector with that value. After adding up all these results, I scale them by r max and add them to the velocity. And before I add them, I also apply the friction factor. Then I implement the force function and we're done. But right now nothing is happening in our particle system because the maximum force value is just 1 and we would have to wait ages for something interesting to happen, so we can simply introduce a new variable and scale all forces with that constant value. Now we can easily make this 3D by simply adding additional arrays for the Z coordinate and respecting the new coordinate in all relevant parts of the code. And to render the particles with a 3D perspective, I let the coordinates range from negative 1 to 1, and then scale the screen coordinates based on the z-coordinate. And then realize again that nothing is happening, because particles in 3D are now scattered further apart, so we simply increase our maximum radius to make everything feel closer together. Now there are two further things you probably want to do from here on. Firstly, you could introduce periodic boundary conditions, so that the particles don't leave the screen. And secondly, you can implement a space partitioning so that you don't have to check all n-square pairs of particles. This will make your simulation much faster, and this is even more important than using a fast programming language or optimizing your code in any other way. 
and I think I will leave it at that for now. I will make more of these kinds of videos, so if you like them, consider subscribing. And remember that you can download the simulator from ParticleLife.com, for which contributions on GitHub are also very appreciated by the way. And we also have a Discord server for Particle Life that is linked in the description. Thank you so much for watching.